on this episode of Spirit Talk. So I went to sleep that night. Now, one of the reports inside that room was somebody waking up to a female at the bottom of the bed. Now, I'm going to admit something right now. One of the only things that I'm really scared and don't want to happen when I'm trying to sleep is something to stand at the bottom of my bed. I'll, I'll, I'll communicate with you. We will we'll exchange notes, maybe even phone numbers, but we are not going to stand at the bottom of my bed when I'm sleeping. That's sleep time for me. But anyway, so I was like, I have to be ready just in case. So I go to sleep and I wake up at two o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you why I knew what time it was as well. I wake up at 2 a.m. or just around 2 a.m. time to hearing the JS2 going, boop, 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 which means there's movement coming through the grid. Hi, I'm Chris Fleming, the creator of Spirit Talk. You're listening to the podcast where I'll be bringing you the greatest thinkers, researchers, and contributors from around the world to discuss what we know in the field of the paranormal, life after death, and the pursuit of higher consciousness. Hey, it's Chris Fleming. Welcome back to this month's edition of Spirit Talk. And I have with me none other than Haunted Scotland, Haunted Ireland's own Ryan O'Neill, how are you, Ryan? I'm great. How are you? More importantly, Good. I know you. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> you look very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you do too. <laughs> we both got the baseball caps on. You guys can't see us right now, but we both got our baseball caps on. <laughs> have to keep nice and warm in this cold weather. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, how have you been, buddy? I've been fantastic. Really busy. Um, I think I think we've all been really busy, haven't we? But yeah, it's it's been a it's been a busy time lately, um, especially with Spooked Island or Haunted Island as it is in America right. coming out. Yeah, and I noticed, uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about that in this episode, but also, you know, just about every day I'm looking at your Facebook with your Haunted Scotland, and you know, let's get to know a little bit about you behind the scenes, not just on the show, but you are always going to haunted locations and not only streaming, but also investigating with, with your team, but then also with a lot of your followers. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. I mean, th- this is basically what I do as a passion. You know, it, it's nonstop. I don't um, just do a little bit and then go back to doing um, something else. I do this full time. Um, and, you know, if you'd asked me at school, what would Ryan do when he was older? I don't think <laughs> investigating the paranormal was really up there pretty high. Um, it's not <laughs> it's not something you'd have thought of, is it? But um, but yes, with, with, with Haunted Scotland and along with um, my teammates like Greg and Lee and the team there, um, we do look into cases all over Scotland and uh, we have fun doing it as well. You know, a mixture of fun, a mixture of seriousness. And uh, if you follow the page, you'll probably see that I do pop up in some weird and wonderful places. Yeah, who would have known that the platform Haunted Scotland that you created on Facebook would end up becoming a show? <laughs> <laughs> that actually blew my mind. I remember because I think it was you that said to me, you know what it's getting called in, in America? It's Haunted Scotland. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've got my pages haunted Scotland, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I never thought for a minute that um, that's what would happen. If you'd said to me um, 10, 15 years ago, um, you know, the, the name of your page will be the name of a show that's on Discovery or, or one of their, their channels, I would have just laughed and thought, come on, <laughs> be serious. <laughs> so yeah, bit of a shock. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, I mean, you obviously know Ryan from the series Haunted, Spooked Scotland and Haunted, Spooked Ireland. And we'll talk about those title differences in a minute. But, you know, like Ryan said, he does this full time, but he's also got his own platform in doing this. Can you tell us about how you came up with the idea, when you came up with the idea of Haunted Scotland and what it's all about for those that are not familiar with it? Okay, yeah. So if we rewind back, um, I've been doing this for 20 years now. And um, so it was 20 years ago, I started with uh, an insane passion to find out why I had certain experiences when I was younger. So when I go back to I was three years old, I had a paranormal experience when I was in the cot that I can still see even right now as I talk about it in, in my head. I was in my cot. It was nighttime. I seen blobs of a darkness come along the walls and form. That's what I some... saw. <laughs> no way. Yes, I seen it form. Well, this is what I saw. And it, and it formed into this 
sphere, but not a not a perfect sphere. It, it was it, it had you know bumps to it. What and you know it was it was pulsating up and down above above my cot. And I remember I was trying to hit it away. You know, oh, get, you know, this is what I was trying to do, and um, it remained there. And I was making a noise. And next thing I know, my dad comes in, turns the light on, and it all disappears. So that was my introduction. Brian, it's it's like, you know, you you and I have, we've sat beside each other. We worked together over two years, and I did not even know this. Mm. You know, shame on me for not asking. But the fact of the matter is, is that. You know, this is a very similar story that a lot of kids have, as well as myself, but it's like resonating. Because when we lived in Park Lane, I used to see the shadows come out of the walls, and I realized mm-hmm. it's not my cats. And I'd scream for my dad. He'd come in, turn the hallway light on, and he'd tell me they're just nightmares, you know? Yeah. And eventually they got rid of the wallpaper because all these other things that were coming out of the walls and the shadows. And then my dad told me, you know, you just it's just a nightmare. Tell it to go away. So the next time it happened, I said, my dad says you're just a nightmare. Go away. So the shadow came closer to the bed, pulled on the sheets. I pulled it, pulled back, and I screamed because there was oh, just wow. the physical interaction. It's not a nightmare. And then I started sleeping in my parents' room. So that's one of my earliest memories. So hearing you say it, I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God, you know, this must be. And I'm sure a lot of people listening right now could relate to what Ryan just said. Mm-hmm. And it, it, they've had that experience, too. And even as adults, we have that experience. I, I just spoke at the uh, University of Texas a couple weeks ago. I was telling them I can train people to see these shadow things because it exists outside our visual spectrum between the light and the dark. And anybody listening is you could, if, if you're brave enough, all right, is at nighttime when you're in your room going to bed and you got the moonlight coming through or there's a slight little, there has to be some slight light source, okay, for where it goes from a little bit of light to complete darkness. You look in between. And when you look in between, you stare at in between. And you are going to start seeing movements to the left and to the right of your peripheral vision. And you're going to start seeing these things coming in and out because that goes just outside of visual spectrum into the IR or the UV. And that's where these things tend to be outside of that sight, unless light is a certain way. When we're younger, you know, Aaron Sagers had told me this, is that we have this sheathing on our eyes that when we become five, six, seven years old, it goes away. That allows us to see more of the spectrum outside the visual spectrum, which is why a lot of kids tend to see these things more than adults do, but you can train yourself. But anyway, that's a tangent. I just, I'm blown away. You know, so you've had these experiences ever since you were a child. Yeah, I had, I was three years old. And and the reason I found that out is I I had a conversation with, with my father um, when I was older, obviously, a, a party of all places, and I said to him, I could explain exactly how the room looked, what was outside the back window, the position of everything inside the room. And he says, that's impossible. You can't do that because you were three. And I said, I can. And the reason I can is because of the experience I had it embedded into my memory. So I explained the room layout. I drew it on a piece wow. of paper. And I showed him, and he went, oh, my God. He says, I couldn't even remember fully that that layout and when I see it now I'm like so having that experience now there's a another part of that and it was a family member it was my auntie who who actually said to me I did have a name for whatever this was now I, I can't rem- it was a long name it started with a Y it was it, it wasn't a common name like we would use so there was a name to this I can't remember what that was I can't remember that aspect of it I just remember it was pulsating up and down above my cot. I was trying to hit it away, ooh, 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 you know. Did it and you? Um, I was scared. Yeah, I, I was scared. I, but I don't see. See, thinking back to it just now, I don't think it was negative. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you know, I didn't do anything. It just pulsated up and down. It's like it was coming towards me in a way, and then towards me in a way. Um, but when it formed, it formed from many different pieces. It didn't. It wasn't just one thing coming across one wall. Yeah. This thing come across a wall, uh, a ceiling, uh, another wall, and formed together yeah. above the cot. And then, you know, so it wasn't just like one thing coming across a wall. Um, and I and I and I vaguely remember this. So that that something that stuck with me for a long, long time. And then I had a major um, paranormal experience when I was twelve. 
um, where is I was supposed to be at school. I was supposed to be at high school, and I wasn't. I was with another <laughs> friend, and we decided not to go. Why were you at say. school, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why was I not there? <laughs> and uh, we went to a friend's house. Who this other friend was? He, he wasn't my direct friend. He was a friend of the guy I was with. Um, we went to his house. His parents were working, and they put the the soccer, the football, on the TV. And um, my friend says, "Can I use your toilet?" to him and he says yeah so my friend goes away up to the toilet we're sitting talking we're talking about the game that's on the screen and he comes down and he goes do you have a ghost in here and i laughed i was like Ugh. you know um and he says yeah we do and he was like what and i was like uh ah. he says yeah we've got a ghost it, it, it does certain things now he says listen and he, he turned the volume on his tv down from the football and then all of a sudden i could hear this walk and shuffle walk oh and shuffle above our heads now my first reaction is he's got somebody in here he's got i mean right away i'm an investigator 12 year old he's got someone in here there's <laughs> someone there there's somebody hiding under the bed there's somebody in the cupboard there's something going on and he says come on we'll go upstairs and i was terrified i remember i was like every emotion is going through my body what if it's a ghost what if it's not who could it be so we'll walk up the stairs we get I'm in the middle, so so the guy who who owns the house, his, his parents own the house, he's at the front, I'm in the middle, and my other friend who's already experienced something when he went to the toilet is at the back. And um, we're walking up, we get halfway up the stairs, and we hear an almighty crash. So we all look at each other, we run into his little sister's room, and in the middle of the floor is a broken piggy bank. Huh? And we're like, and now at this point, I've got to admit, I was looking under the bed, I was looking inside the wardrobe, because I'm saying somebody, somebody has to be here, because the alternative to somebody being there is there is a ghost here, there, there is a spirit here, and I don't understand that at this point. So I looked everywhere, and no one was there. Not a soul. Well, not a soul. There was also a soul, but there was not a physical soul um, standing there. This is where it gets crazy. We begin to walk back down the stairs. Now, as you get to the bottom of the stairs in this house, if you look to the right, you look right into the kitchen, and the kitchen has a glass door that goes out to the yard out the back. And he's got big Alsatian dogs, this guy. And we hear them barking as we're coming down to the bottom. We turn around, we look into the kitchen, and every single cupboard door is wide open in the drawers, and the oh. dogs are at the glass door trying to get in. Oh my God! Barking, and I freaked. I I completely. What that did to me at that age is we left. I said we're going. <laughs> I'm not staying here any longer. <laughs> we're going. And uh, what that did at that age for the next two weeks after that, I continuously walked around saying, "What is this world about? What there is such a thing as I, this is outside what I've been told, you know? Right. Um, what, so what is this? What what is going on? So that was probably another seed that was planted for me when I um, re reached my, my, my mid-20s, basically, and decided to get answers to find out what was going on. Because I knew something was going on because of these experiences. And there was a few other tiny little ones that, that happened in the way, but those were the major ones. And I thought, I, I need to get answers. And at the time that I looked, there, there wasn't many right. teams around or things that I could join. And I decided I'll I'll go and do it. And yeah. you no, know, when you start this, you you seem to attract other people who are on a similar path. No, ab absolutely. And I'm just wondering if you know a lot of the listeners in in hearing you know Ryan's remarkable story are imagining as I am that if Ryan had a red pod and he brought it into the kitchen and he put it down on the counter and it starts going off and he starts yelling to his friends, "Red pod, red pod, red pod, red pod." <laughs> <laughs> but like the kid voice, red pod, red pod, red pod. Yes, <laughs> red exactly. Pod. <laughs> right? Oh my oh, god! It, it was it was it was a crazy experience, and um, I spoke to the guy after that, and um, I was like, "What kind of things?" You know, I was curious. What I was kind just going to ask happen? you that. Yeah, what what happened? Yeah, I, and he was like, "Yeah," he says, "It's things like you know, mum will tell me to put the kettle on so we can have tea, and um, the kettle will be put on." Um, come back through, sit down, go through to check. The kettle's been turned off. The cold water's still cold. And he, he would get told off for it. But he, he listened one day to his mum 
and the next door neighbour, because the, the next door's joined on, it's, it's a semi-detached. Yeah. So he hears the next door neighbour talking to his mum and, and she's getting activity too. Wow. She's getting things happening as well. So they're, they're talking and he's listening to this and they become, they, they, they learn to live with it. He says that cupboard doors would be open and wardrobe doors would be open and, you know, the dogs would be going crazy and things would get moved. And I say, do you have any idea who it is or what they want? And he said to me that before they moved in there, there was this older guy. And I remember this guy walking around the village. He walked with a little bit of a, a hunchback and he would walk with a walk and a shuffle, walk and a shuffle. And you used to see him around going to the shops and, and, and things, bus stop, waiting on a bus. And he says he lived there before and he died. So they suspect that, well, he suspected that it could yeah. be him and trying to get some sort of attention. So doing all these things to get attention. Um, that would fit the noise that I heard from above from above their heads, basically. Um, as for my friend um, who went to the toilet, he'd been sitting in the toilet <laughs> and he heard somebody moving around outside the toilet door. Oh, my God. So, and, and banging noises and shuffling and things. So that's why he jokingly, <laughs> I have to say, said, Do you, is this house haunted or something? We all laughed and um, they turned around and said, yes, it's haunted. It probably scared the shit out of him. Oh, he was, <laughs> he, well, he was at the back. Yeah. <laughs> he was at the back. So this stuck with me. And then, um, you know, I'm in Scotland. So, you know, I'd heard places like the, the vaults and Mary King's Close and all these very, very well-known spooky places. You know, um, Glam's Castle, you read about it in books when you're younger and the ghost stories of Scotland and Edinburgh Castle. Right. And I wanted to see what I could do um, you know, to get access and just experience more of what I'd already experienced. And that's where it started. I made a, gr a group named Scottish Paranormal, a team. Okay. That's how it started. And I still, we still use the name Scottish Paranormal as well, but Scottish Paranormal was the, the main team. And we had to learn. I, I had to go through an insane amount of learning. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't just go out and do it. I had to I, you know, countless hours researching and finding other teams and speaking to the founders of those teams and asking how they would do it and just formulating from different people how I could successfully do this, but then add on what my contribution was going to be right. to this. And how long you know, have you been get, doing? How long was Scottish been around? But tw mean, twenty years. It's, wow, it's been twenty years. So it's been two two decades of that. Yeah. And um, I, I did take a small break for maybe two hours. Uh, two years. Two hours. You have to. Two yeah. years. Um, um, between that because I was studying more into the, um, spirituality at that right. point and other things so I took a break to, to dive into that then I come back to do this using some more of what I learned when I took that break um, but yes it was um, so and I've had many team members and investigators to work with and some have moved on to do their own path some right. have decided it's maybe not for them now and some are still here and, and, and working away um, with us at the same time and it's, and it's been amazing so when you were growing up, I mean, you had these experiences when you were three years old, very young, you know, which, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have and a lot of people that haven't. So they don't know what it's like growing up with that type of belief and mindset, as well as curiosity. So when you were going to school, I mean, did you go to, did you go to grade school, high school? Yeah, like through the moment, yeah. Did you yeah. ever, like, talk about that at all during those years? N no, I, I never ever spoke about the one at three year old, and actually, it, it, it probably was something that wasn't at the forefront of my, my mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. Um. Until obviously the experience when I was around about twelve years old. Um. That then it, it was it was a it was a thing where you didn't really want to tell all your yep. friends because you don't yep. know how they would accept that. Um. Apart from the one guy I was with, and he knew exactly what had happened. Um. So that was quite difficult. I had various other little experiences um, that, you know, I didn't really tell anyone, but was witnessed by others. Um, one that, that was really, really weird was um, I was in my auntie's house and my auntie was sitting in the living room. I was sitting in the living room. My uncle was in the living room. We were watching TV and um, she had a, a large mirror that was above the, on the fireplace, big, massive mirror. And from the corner of my eye, I was aware of movement. So when I turned around, the mirror was actually moving back and forward wow. from the wall and it was swaying. I just got ready to turn around and say, do you see that? And I noticed my auntie was staring at it at the same time. And I said, oh, and she said, and her words to me, because I've got little cousins, her daughters, turned around and said, 
you tell your little cousins and I'll kill you. <laughs> that was all they said to me. Oh my but God. apparently there, it was another place where things would, would, would gently happen. Um, my auntie used to say to me, I think you attract them. It was her words to me, I think you attract because things just seem to go strange yeah. around you. Because I've had these, I mean, I've had one experience, 18 year old, which is quite major as well. Um, I have definitely have that experience and, and I've, and, you know, I've had one with one of my oldest kids who viewed something that was on the ceiling next to the to the light. She was she was very young. She was four, and she was giving a uh uh towards it and trying to swat it away. And the light started flickering at the same time. Oh wow! And, and the bulb. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so that was quite something. Um, the one at eighteen. I, I suppose I should have used this as sort of like a catalyst for Scottish paranormal because at eighteen, I was single. I had my own flat. And um, I still can't explain what happened to this day. The only the only people in that house was myself and a kitten. I, I'd got a little kitten. Aww. And um, I used to go to my work and then I'd come home from work and then I'd watch TV and have dinner. And it was a very exciting life. And this would happen till the weekend and I'd go party of the weekend. That that was life for me. And I just moved into this flat and it was in an old part of the, the village I was in. And it was an old miner's house, actually. And uh, for the day I moved in there, I thought, it was just a little one bedroom one. I was like, this is a weird place. There's just something. I couldn't put my finger on it. It was just like, do you, like you feel watched or like there's somebody here or, and I just thought, it's a really weird place. And then one night I come home from work and as I put the key in the door and I opened the door, I was, I got this high pitched thing in the ear where I was very aware. I thought somebody was in the house. I was very aware of something coming from the, the living room area and I turned around and looked in the living room and the TV was on mm-hmm. so I walked into the living room and I'm looking towards the sofa on the left thinking the landlord's maybe sitting watching TV in my house or something and I look and there's nobody there and I'm like wow I turned that TV off so then you question yourself like maybe I didn't right. maybe I didn't turn it off then. Right. Maybe this kind of thing was going on for a few weeks I'm sure I put that light on I'm sure I put that light off and this would continue to happen just small things until, <laughs> until one night I went to bed and I had a little bedside lamp and I fell asleep with it on. And I woke up in the morning and it was off and I went, oh, the bulb's blue. And I went to the switch to click it to check and it come on. And I went, oh, but I didn't switch that off. I know I didn't switch that off. Okay, so I get up and I walk through to the living room. When I walk into my living room, the TV is turned to its side. All the ornaments what? around it are on top of the TV. I go, oh, my God, I've been broken into. Somebody's broke in. I go to the window that's behind the TV and check, and it's locked. I walk through to the small kitchen, which was off the living room. The, I had a stool. It was sitting in the middle of the floor. The cat litter is underneath the stool. I'm like, what the heck? So I check the window. I go straight to the front door, check that. It's locked. The key's in the back of the door. So I sit down on the chair, and the kitten's running around at this point. I sit in the chair, and you know when you just sit there and you're going, what's going on? What's... Yeah, I'm still half sleeping as well. Right. Like, what the heck's going on here? It's like I've been broken into. And just at that, I turn around to my left and look at the kitten. Now this I did know. The kitten arches its back and starts hissing looking over my shoulder and walking backwards. Yep. <laughs> I'm not joking, Chris. I stood up, didn't even have shoes on, and walked out the door. Oh, poor walked, kitten, you left it there? What, I left the kitten, I left the kitten oh in the God. house, walked down the street for about, I don't know, 20 paces, stopped and went, where am I going? <laughs> I just took such a fright. I was yep. like, oh my, I'd have to go back. I have to, I have to go oh back in. So I'll go back in, but I walk in. The kitten's fine. When I go in, the kitten's running around fine. So I walk back in. And I walk to the left of my bedroom. I just go through to my bedroom, shut the door, and sit in my bed and think, what am I going to do? I think there's a ghost. I think there's a ghost here. I think something's going on. And that was such a major experience for oh, me. Yeah. My friend came up that day and I showed, I didn't move anything. I left everything in the exact same position. And I said to him, look at this. And he was like, what are you doing? I was like, I woke up to it like this. And he said, you're a liar. And I said, like, I'm telling you, I woke no, come on, you did this. I, I did not do this. This is this is what's happened. I called a medium out, got a medium to come out and check. They said that they tuned into a, an old miner who stayed there, but he didn't know he was dead. He thought he was still alive. Oh, wow. But listen to this one. He used to sit and watch the TV. 
Oh, Remember the TV thing? Oh, my God, yeah. All he wanted was a cup of tea and a piece of toast. And nobody would give him it. So he was trying to get people's attention. That's incredible. And this is too. So that was probably I, I stayed there for another they done they done some sort of um cleansing and sage things in the house and they, they said a prayer as well. And um I stayed there for another, I don't know, three, four weeks, and then I moved. The, but the house was fine. <laughs> three, four weeks. Happened, but the, nothing happened in the three, four weeks. But I just I, I think I, out of here. I think I was probably considering a move anyway, but I was like, yeah, I think I'll probably just move on from here. Um, I spoke to a neighbor, just to add in, just to finish that story off. I spoke to the neighbor who lived there, and he said, you know, that house is always up for let. Nobody stays long. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that explains it. (laughs) I think think we know what's happening there. Wow, so you've had multiple experiences growing up. Yeah. Did you think, I mean... Obviously, you know, you're experiencing these things and you brought up earlier, little did we know that we'd be doing this as adults, you know, as a a profession. But what was it when you were growing up at the time? What is it that you wanted to do besides what you're doing now? Was there anything you had in mind or you just didn't know growing up? I didn't know. I, I, I was one of these people who tried the different things. I mean, I went into the army and done my basic training in the oh. army. To, to the British Army to go and do that. Unfortunately, I'm I'm one of those kind of souls that don't like getting told what to do too much. I know, um, and that doesn't work in there. I can speak <laughs> from I that firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was that was one aspect. I, I think I was a, I was a bit of a I was a bit of a prankster as well. So you know we're we're trying to we're trying to do our um, basic training, and it's you know. And I would like to lighten the mood a little bit by maybe putting shaving foam in somebody's boots, <laughs> you know. Um, and I, I, I quickly found out that, the, you know, some in the British Army don't really like you doing things like that and they will make an example of you. So, and I was fine. And, and I, I got like half to three quarters away through the the basic training, but then they'd done a thing called back squad. Um, it got to the stage where they says, we're going to put you back a squad because there's thing more things we need you to learn and your your behavior is atrocious um you're just a trickster and that that really ate me a bit because i've th- at that point i've went through all these weeks mm-hmm. with the same friends that you built a close bond yeah, absolutely because you're waking up together you're eating together you're doing you're getting put into gas chambers together you're doing all this kind of stuff through your training and then i'm i'm back to a, a squad with people i don't know there's a few weeks to go, and plus the the sergeant within that squad tells you he's going to make your life hell because he knows you've been put, what you've been put back for, and I just everything fell for me at that point. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Um, and it was at that time it was a junction to I'm going to have to make some sort of change here, um, and I decided I think I'm, they tried to keep me in. They said you want to stay. You know, you're Scottish. Our best soldiers come from Scotland, and they tried all this thing. I'm like, no, just let me go, please. Yeah, it wasn't for you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm sort of glad. I mean, um, after all that, you you you've got your Afghanistan's coming up, and all this kind of thing in the future, which we didn't know at the time. Um, and it would have been really difficult, I think, on family, friends, and myself to to be going into that. Plus, my my mindset now is more spiritual about not harming right. other people, and I would I would I don't think I'd be able to do that. And kudos to the people who do and protect us and do that stuff. But myself has shifted a lot right. um, from that person back then. And plus, um, I was really just looking for some sort of discipline and something to do rather than the deep, deep passion that I have for the paranormal. I didn't probably have that same thing for the army. So the people do have that. I probably didn't have that aspect. So I think things happen for a reason. And I don't think I was meant to be there. Well, that absolutely so, makes yeah, sense. I, yeah. Yeah. That, that, I went through things like that. Um, as I come forward, um, and it, as you know as well, um, obviously I'm, I'm not with my wife anymore, but when I was with my wife, I was a carer, and I did a lot of care duties, and I, and I did do that during Spook Scotland as well. I remember. Um, so I was I was coming away, doing blocks, go back and doing that. So a lot of my time was doing that. At the same time, I am working on the paranormal side, and I'm building something in the background here and trying to get research done, and I'm working on websites, and I'm, I was doing a tourism course at the same time through... Um, the local college, um, and just trying to improve myself in certain aspects um, there. So I had a lot on um, moving forward in a lot of different aspects, but the main passion 
for me was discovering what was going on, the unexplained. Um, especially, I mean, we say paranormal, but for me, especially the afterlife, right. the afterlife aspect of it and, and spirit and spiritual aspects, that seems to be the main area that draws me in. The rest I love as well, but th- those areas certainly draw me into it. And it just happens to be that I've been taken down this path to where I sit just now. Absolutely. You know, and I know, you know, we worked together the first season, Haunted Scotland, uh, Spooked Scotland. And I didn't get to know you that well. I mean, I, we got to know each other, but, you know, with doing a first season and racing around, plus Gail and I had worked together. So her and I had that bond of just, yeah. we took off with that chemistry. And then when we come to a second season, you and I discuss, okay, what, what could we do differently for the second season? And then we discuss that with the directors, producers, Evelyn and stuff is really focusing on everybody, you know, showing their abilities and their knowledge with stuff that they do. You and I had a lot more time the second season to kind of ride in the car together and talk about stuff mm-hmm. because, you know, Gail, which is a very alpha personality like myself, wasn't right there. So I got to learn so much more about you the second season and I was blown away. I mean, you, you told mm-hmm. a couple of the stories here, but I was blown away by not only your, your passion and building up what you've been doing with Haunted Scotland, with Greg and your teammates, mm. and you driving all over the place. I mean, you, you're always in the car driving everywhere, yeah. but you also have a family, you know, the kids that you're taking care of mm-hmm. and, and the responsibilities. And I was blown away. How do you juggle all that stuff? You know, because I mean, mm. I know with, with my schedule and everything else, it's tough for me, you know, plus I, I've got to deal with a lot of pain for my car accident and stuff, but is, mm. it, it's tough for me to try to juggle all these things in, in a social life and a personal life as well. But I was blown away by you're always making time for your kids and you're doing all this other stuff. And then you're always building, I mean, you're self-employed. I mean, this is, this is your business. This is your career. Mm -hmm. But during those times that we shared in the car, you, and I don't know if you're comfortable even talking about it, but you told me some of your spiritual out of body experiences, stuff that you, we talked about the gateway and I was blown away and I totally resonated with the stuff you were saying. And I remember turning to you in the car says, Ryan, I didn't know this about you. Yeah. Can you share some of those things? Yeah, Because you talked about I, spiritual I, earlier, and I want yeah. I want listeners to understand that the guy they see on TV doing all the tech stuff, this is his life that brought him to this moment on TV. Yeah. He was meant to be on TV doing what he's doing because of his background, but share your spiritual stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And and that was a mind-blowing moment because we, we we discussed a lot of things, and there were things you were saying. I'm, I, I'm, I said, I've done this as well. You know, an out-of-body experience, um, you know, the gateway, Benaro Beats, yeah. um, the spiritual aspects, synchronicities that, that, that happen, you know, and I've been through this. Now, you remember I said I took two years out to study. Now, there's a reason why I did that. The reason being is I was having a few weird things happening in my environment around me and these i would just put down as synchronicities meaningful coincidences that were happening and the display of numbers showing up like 222 1111 and this kind of thing now it's not just that it shows up and you we all know you know broken clocks right twice a day or whatever <laughs> the saying is you know we've heard all the, these kind of suggestions and arguments and debates about that but when they you've got to be there when they happen in specific circumstances specific events coinciding together and you just know that that was a special moment everybody's had it you know where the phone rings and you know exactly who it is and you pick up and it is or you think of someone you've not seen for many many years and then you walk around the corner and they're standing there in the street in front of you people have these experiences and there's a reason within this universe i believe that these happen it is guided that way to happen because you will have a purpose or something to do and this is where i found myself coming in and i had i'm the kind of person i've got to start studying and researching and looking into things so if i've got to take two years out to look at something that must be significant and this is exactly what i did at the time um, I looked into all the aspects and I come across Bob Monroe and the Gateway yep. experience. I come across all of that and I use Benuro Beats. Benuro Beats is what enabled me to have an out of body experience. I had to practice at it because you, you use the beats to do this. Mm-hmm. I had to learn the vibration state that you'll go through before you go out of body, the sleep paralysis, and how that means so much more than just the scientific terms that were given about it. Yeah, maybe. 
keeps your body frozen so you don't act out your dreams. I get that. But what you won't hear very much is if you can go through the sleep paralysis and don't freak out, you will then go through a vibration and popping sounds and you will pop out your body at the end of it. It's the beginning of a stage of an out-of-body experience. Most people don't get there because they freak out because... Right. It feels like somebody's on your chest, you know, the old hag syndrome. Mm -hmm. You may see something in the room. You may feel very uneasy. These are fear tests before you can move further and come out of body. You know, you have to go through that. That is there in that position for you. And what's happening is you can't move your body because your consciousness is separating from your body. You, you're not in your body. You're your consciousness. And that's what I found in my out-of-body experience. I went through what felt like a heart attack, but it wasn't. It was the vibrations and the noises and the woo, woo going through me. Whoosh. And whoosh. And yep, then whoosh sound. Yeah. I was out. <laughs> I was above my head. <laughs> now, I didn't have vision. Um, it was the very first time I'd done it. I was just aware where I was inside my room. I had that experience for five minutes, and it was the most amazing feeling I have ever felt. Talk about having no worries or anything weighing you down and feeling so light. It's unbelievable. And and in that state, I was so excited to come back and take notes, write it down and communicate with people who I knew had had this. And that's exactly what I did. Now, my reason for doing that was I've, I'm a firm believer you cannot discount what is happening without trying it, right? Einstein said, you know, about ignorance and investigations, didn't he? You know, um, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance, Albert Einstein. How many people condemn things without investigating? You know, Einstein said it plainly back at the time. So I can't say that something works or doesn't work without trying it. I've done it with Frank's boxes. I've done it with spiritual apps. I've done it with out-of-body experience. I've done it with remote viewing, to name a few, because I knew in the past at certain points I was overly sceptical and ignorant by judging what could work and what couldn't work in paranormal research or in spirituality. So when I'm doing a lot of study, into a body experience and some people are saying oh they don't work it's just your brain da, da, da. i say i need to find out myself so i'll go and do it have that body experience and go yeah it's true take a tick to it and say this is brilliant it works and i'd done the same with the remote viewing i'd done a remote viewing where it was tom campbell who was watching who i love his work and he had drawn a picture um on a piece of paper on a youtube video and he was telling his audience his, his group there you know get into the remote viewing state you know, get rid of your, your conscious mind and you're sitting there and try and see what you see. I went into a deep dreamlike um, area where I could see in 3D a horse going around a paddock and it was like I was just off the back of it and it was, oh, and I had like the dreamy look around the outside and I went, my God, I'm seeing a horse here. There's a horse. And just at that, I bring myself back out. Of it. Tom Campbell says, can you guess what it is? He turns his paper around and he drew a stick horse. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, my God, it yeah. works. It works. And not just that. I didn't get exactly the picture. I got, I got the full-blown 3D beautiful image, and he he'd obviously just drew a stick horse. But it wasn't about the exact picture on the paper. It was about his intention to what it was. And that is what I've picked up on my consciousness when I've done this. So then, green, there's another tick. Doom. <laughs> yeah, remote viewing works. So now, because I know these things work, I can study further into them and see how could these help me on my journey? How could these help me if I talk about this to other people so it can help them on their journey and they know what they get is good stuff as well. So that is why I took those two years to do these things, to, tr to try and verify them. I've done the same with spirit apps. Um, apps can't work, apps won't work. You, we've yeah. heard all the arguments, and that's yeah. fair enough. You know, one guy I said to, Have you used it? was Echovox. Have you used Echovox? No, I don't need to. I know it doesn't work. <laughs> well, how could you say that? You can't right. say it doesn't work. You've got to at least use it and tell me it's rubbish. You know, <laughs> don't, don't just tell me without using it. Because I took the app, I said, I'm going to see if this works. I took it to a ruinous Scottish castle. I didn't expect to get much, I'll be honest with you. I was asking out, and I get a Glaswegian female voice saying Glasgow to me. And I was like, what the heck's going on here? So I go directly into Twitter. I get in touch with Danny, who created the app over in America there. And I say, Danny, what did you use? What is inside these sound banks? Do you use any Scottish? And he was like, no, sir. It's, he told me the, the, about the audiobooks and how, how it's made. 
And I said, I've got something. And I told him and he went, wow, you've got something there. Well done. You know, so I was just like, I was blown away. At that stage, I decided I need to study ITC apps and build, but basically build a working hypothesis around it. You know, right. I'm not just going to judge this. I, I want to see more. And I was getting Scottish slang words like dafty and all these things that can't possibly be inside this device. And that's exactly what I'd done with that. And then I went one step further on the back of that and decided I want to control the audio banks. I want to put my audio in there because if I create audio and put them inside that app and we get communication, I know a million percent at that point that I have a, an app that works, an ITC that works. And that's exactly what happened. We put the audio banks in. I created every bank. I reversed the books, 150 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds, but, you know, with the phonemes, had it randomized, had it going, and we still got communication. We still got sentences. That's a Scottish Paranormal app. Um, yeah. And it's not because I'm trying to sell it, because you, you can't even buy it. So, but, you know, um, Scottish Paranormal app, that's all those words, all those phrases. We, we had it in Spooked Scotland. We've had yeah. stuff in Spooked Ireland. I've had things for the last five years coming through it as well. And, just to reverse back a little bit to, you know, apps can't work. How can spirit use digital apps? It always takes me back to one thing during my spiritual reading at the time and when I was looking at areas, and it was pair labs across America who had random number generators, and they showed us on a graph that during the time of 9-11 and Princess Diana's death, that consciousness somehow affected the random number generators. This is physical consciousness this is consciousness inside the physical body global yeah. consciousness project yeah. somehow affected these digital devices i'll say consciousness inside human form affected these digital devices without knowing at these times of high emotional impact even one of the graphs showed it just before the plane hit so it's like consciousness knew it was going to happen if consciousness inside a physical body can affect an electronic device i'll say again what can consciousness not restricted by a body do? And can they use random audio generators to communicate with us, which is an app? And that's that's the way that I've come forward with it. That's fascinating. I've, I used to speak about the Global Consciousness Project a decade ago, and I'm glad you brought that up because it shows your background in various forms of not only software and components that deals with you know various realms of consciousness, but also with remote viewing. And the, the gateway, which blew me away, the knowledge that you had regarding all this, because we, we didn't really get to discuss this the first season or even see it. No. And that's what I love about, you know, the. I mean, I want to go off, I want to go talk about the series in a minute, but I want to state this real quick, just to compliment what you said. I remember, mm. this would have been maybe about 2008, 2009, I was at the Stanley Hotel for one of Dave Schrader's darkness events, and I got to be good friends with... Uh, John Zaffis and Adam Bly. Adam Bly, because he was at Penn State, he was a counselor there. He had access to one of the global consciousness programs that's used in all the universities because they had it running there in Penn State. So he brought it with to Stanley Hotel and they were in one of the rooms away from everybody else and where all the commotion was in the main building. And he told me to come by and check it out because I wanted to check it out because I knew about the stuff before 9-11, some other tragedies that have occurred and how it reacted to it. He says, Chris, we want to try something. So it was him and John were in the room. They had me come into the room, sit in a chair right in front of the global consciousness. And they were watching the randomness and it wasn't doing anything. And he said, ah, it's not doing anything. We thought maybe with your presence being psychic, it would do something. And it's not. I said, all right, well, let me try something. So they're watching it. It's pretty much just stationary. What I started doing is I started doing inside my head is prayer. I started connecting non-locally to my guides and spirits on the other side. All of a sudden, the thing started going up. And it started going up. And they're like, holy cow, it's going up. It's breaking the randomness. And he goes, keep doing what you're doing. And it just kept going up, up, up. And then it bottomed out to where it was high up above the normal that it's been all day. And then they said, okay, just walk out of the room. I walk out of the room and it went back to the neutral randomness that it was. So it yeah. showed that something within the environment did affect it, which was the prayer and the connection I started establishing with spirit on the other side. For me, it was interesting to not only experience that firsthand, but to have someone knowledgeable like Adam that is familiar with that program, that's been testing it, 
to validate how consciousness can affect that. So I became a believer that software components can be affected by consciousness. And usually it's when our consciousness goes to higher consciousness, which can be an emotional state, knowing that it's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's going to affect everybody on an emotional level where we're all together at one same frequency of terror, panic, emotional response. Because if there's all differences, there's just going to be random deviation. But like a laser beam, if it's all similar, it becomes a very stronger form of energy, which is what's affecting this program. So thank you for bringing that up, because it is a remarkable system. I haven't been following it in the last 10 years, so I don't know what else they've done with yeah. it. But I think that was your, 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 or your, your key to go into the apps, where the apps have some of that similarities, right? Yeah, that's what it was. It's the sim- I, c- I could see how the potential was there. I mean, like many, we've got lots of friends and colleagues within the paranormal community, the paranormal field, both of us and everybody. And, you know, there's different viewpoints. And I know there's people who hate apps. I know mm. they just don't mm. like it. But in all due respect, at the same time, they don't do a lot of work with them. And I just feel that if they could just open up a little bit and maybe try that, they would be quite blown away with some of the the, the, the things that you can get. Um, I mean, I, I read an, an article today and I was going to reply to it and, 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 and just update the information on it because it was quite wrong. But the latest one to try and counter um, some of the great results was that, you know, a lot of the, in fact, actually it said all of the apps use an algorithm and listen to what you're saying and then repeat back to you. No, they don't. I mm. know exactly how, I know how Echovox works. I know somebody who decompiled the thing and looked at it and said, oh, it does work. You know, and I know how my own app works because I got right. a developer to build it and I controlled the sound banks. It's just like a music player selecting tracks, but it's phonemes going so fast with different clocks and engines inside that Spirit somehow managed to manipulate. Yep. Now, you keep getting asked, how do they manipulate? Well, we don't know exactly how they're doing it. But just like we spoke about with the the, the random number generators, consciousness can do it. Consciousness can make the light flicker. It can turn a TV on and off, up and down. It can affect electrics. We had that happen in alcohol. Alcohol, the the, the tapping and the lights flickering. Exactly. They they can do it. So it's it's not any stretch that, that, that spirit or consciousness in some way, can affect many different kinds of devices. I'm not sure what they can't do, and nobody knows exactly, but what I do know is when you're standing in Torwood Castle with a device and you say, name the castle, and the reply is, Torwood Castle. I think that's something significant, and I don't care what anybody thinks if something works or doesn't. If I'm in that environment, I know nobody is in the environment doing anything out with a proper paranormal investigation and we get that kind of evidence i'm going to give that out there i'm going to show that evidence because that is part of the journey that i'm on and the information and data that i'm collecting that people need to know about so they can be inspired to go and do the exact same thing and get their evidence rather than sitting there just saying oh this works or that doesn't work it doesn't matter just go and grab the evidence put it out and test it and then you'll find out exactly what works and what doesn't I'm glad you brought this up because I know you and I discussed this after the first season regarding various apps. And, you know, we went, one of the episodes, Gail and I went to Torwood Castle. I brought out one of the apps and it said, where's Evelyn? And Evelyn wasn't Mm -hmm. with us because something had happened. And I remember the director going, what the hell? He was freaked out. Yeah. And then also, uh, what was the one town we went to with with all the yellow buildings? Is it Kuras? I think it was Kuras. Kuras. Yeah. Yeah. At Kuras, when we were doing, uh, you had your portal. Yeah. With your app running, Scottish Paranormal, Gail and I were doing the Ouija board, okay? And we purposely wanted to have an ITC device set up while we're doing the Ouija board so that whatever movement we had to see if it coincides with what's being said on the IT, which it, it was. Yeah. It was remarkable. But I think one of the most remarkable moments, which you know they didn't put in the show, which to me was just, it's hilarious, but it's, it's also funny. incredible validating spirit communication was our director, Dan, was he's kind of skeptical yeah. of the paranormal. And he, he was very famous for, he doesn't like this lull time where there's just some quietness, yeah. so he'll always interrupt. Yeah. And, and we were all getting frustrated with that at times. Yeah. Well, here, Gail and I are doing the Ouija board, and we know the Ouija board sometimes will pause a little bit, then it'll start responding. Well, so Dan interrupts, walks towards us. Okay, guys, well, why don't you try this, kind of telling us what to do. Yeah. All of a sudden, your <laughs> Scottish paranormal app your portal says, fuck off, Dan. Yeah. 
director. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Dan's eyes light up. He stops, oh, no. turns around, and he goes, okay, I'll shut up. And he oh, walks that was away. Hilarious. And we all turn, we all start laughing, going, yeah, Dan, <laughs> Jesus, man, can you give the spirits a chance to regain themselves and continue talking to us? It was incredible. It was incredible. And obviously, you know, like, I can't put that in the show. Yeah. You know, it's kind of breaking the fourth wall in a really degrading way. <laughs> but it was an incredible no- moment I'll never forget. And yeah. it showed the validity to not only your app, yeah. but, you know, apps in general yeah. that can be used. I, I, I totally agree with you. And, and it was just a perfect, as you say, Dan was, he was more than a skeptical front. And I seen his face. And he yep. was just blown away with what's happening. But he, even there was there was communication coming through during that session. It was just mind blowing. And oh, yeah. obviously they can't put it all in the show. There was so much. We brought a castle. I mean, I just yeah. asked you a couple of weeks ago, remind you, was it the Scottish Paranormal app we used, or was it the Echovox? And you're like, no, it was the Scottish Paranormal. Scottish Paranormal. Is because we had amazing communication mm-hmm. with the Fae when yep. we we're out in the forest. They didn't use any of that, saying I'm yeah. the king elf of the Fae and this and that and. They're telling me about the ether and they were brought, they were pushed up into the mountains and they went into the ether. So we had this whole conversation that we were kind of missing because we were being told to go here, here, yep. here, and they were spitting it out. But I recorded the whole thing. Yeah. And upon analysis, I was able to mark it all in Adobe Audition. I'm like, Ryan, your app worked remarkable, yeah. you know, and I'm trying to figure out how I can get it on because I'm all Mac based. Yeah. So, I mean, I just talked to you a couple of weeks ago is yeah. I want to load that on some piece of equipment or get a new piece of equipment to use it yeah. further. Because I realize it has such amazing results. And then you and I discussed after the first season, okay, what can we bring to the table for a second mm-hmm. season? And we discussed, you know, let's use more apps. Yeah. You know, we use the Ghost Tube, we mm-hmm. use the Afterlife ITC, um, we use Necrophonic. Yeah. What other apps do you remember? Did we use the Scottish I, Paranormal? I, I, we used the Scottish Paranormal one. Um, actually, the Scottish Paranormal app we used at Charleville for the test okay. with Evelyn, but the, she, she wrote down four words. And oh, that was incredible. Them. Um, and she, um, <laughs> I was just blown away. She was blown away. Evelyn was blown right. away with, with yep. what happened because, um, and rightly so, the way Evelyn approached that was, right, okay, there might be some sort of confirmation bias or priming if we hear it together. I'm going to write down four words, and if these words come in, then we'll know we're getting something because you won't know what the words are. And we got all four words. You know, right. nursery, cherub, I think the other one was. We got all four. I think they showed three of the four, but we got all four words on that. And you could see Evelyn's reaction. You know, but she's laughing and swearing. That's because she was like, what the? <laughs> you know, and, she's, and she was doing that. And I thought it was such a great test. We had a parapsychologist sitting there putting a strong uh, blind experiment in there and we put the Scottish Paranormal app to work for that. It was groundbreaking. Got, it was it was amazing. Not even the Chris Chris McMullen was on the camera. He didn't know what the words were. I think Sheila's was standing in the background. She couldn't see and didn't know what the words were. Nobody knew because Evelyn was very strict on that. None of you are getting to see what's on here because I want mm. to see if this works or not. And you see the results in Charleville. And it's just mind blowing. It is mind blowing. I remember I'm sitting in the debrief room. I'm going through some of my EVPs. You guys walk in. You're like, oh my God. Yeah. And Evelyn's like, I'm a believer. She's like, just, you know, she's yeah. rattling off that shoe. I go, what happened? I go, get out of here. I said, God, I want to see it. I want to see it. Can I, can I see? Yeah. Oh, well, we can't rewind the film. You know, this like that. So I didn't get to see it until I saw the rough. Cut yeah. And I was, and I was blown away. Like, oh my God, this is gold. This yeah. is paranormal gold. Right, it's, it's, it was such an amazing time, and and as you know, with Evelyn, Evelyn used to always says, as well, you know, she's very high on making sure everything's done perfect or credibility because right. at the end of the day, she's, she she is a doctor and she is a parapsychologist, and she also has other work that she does, and she keeps herself squeaky clean, so she's never going to allow anything to right. you know go through there that wasn't. So you know, if you hear people saying, oh, you know, apps don't work in that, there is your proof. There is no way she's not just doing it for the show or anything like that. Honestly, you don't know Evelyn then. She's doing it because she wants to get to the truth of what's going on. We've got a case to do there. She doesn't care whether or not it works or doesn't work. She just looks for what's happening and what we're claiming. And we work as a team to see if it's if it's working and where we go from there. And I think at that point, Evelyn thought, whoa, there's something to these to these apps and oh, ITC of devices. Um, and I can see that in other episodes. And that's the thing I think that's exciting about, you know, as we, as we move in now to spooked Ireland and haunted Ireland for the season was 
that we, we still did EVP, not as much. We started working more on some other ITC that was direct, you know, like direct radio phenomena, like such as the Frank's box or actually direct app responses that we were receiving during our investigations when we would ask questions and they would lead us and it, it completely matched up with the history and stuff that we were getting. It also took us in some different turns that were remarkable. And, you know, people get to see that the whole season. The thing I like about it, like, especially when we were on the boat for Wicklow. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, you know, is this thing even going to work out there? Whatever. And the, the I, you know, when these people say in the articles that Chris, let me say, he was blown away by this season. This is one of the things I'm blown away is the questions you were asking about the gates of hell and this and that. And the responses we were getting. And then I'm seeing these spirits in the water. And all of a sudden they start talking to us through the ghost tube app, it's phenomenal because every response was a direct response to what we're talking about and what we're investigating. So the, you have to utilize something like that when it's working. And the mm. fact when it says your name, how many fingers you're holding up, it tells you how many fingers you're holding up. Mm. We've done all those tests. Yeah. And I think people need to realize between Ryan and myself is Ryan has his haunted Scotland. So he's always going to these locations. He's always out in the field. What do I mean by the field? He's always out there investigating. He just doesn't investigate it on TV. He's always out there investigating with all his pieces of equipment and anything new he gets, he's testing it out before he even uses it on a show. I'm doing the same thing with all my paranormal access events and then even cases. I'll bring these apps or I'll bring these devices and I'll use them. And a lot of these apps I've gotten to know from my followers that come to my events and they're using it yeah i mean at joliet prison and the necrophonic and and the ghost tube i'm like what's that it's a ghost tube what do you got oh i got the necrophonic okay i got the spirit box mm -hmm. so we ask a question the spirit box says the answer the necrophonic says the answer and the ghost tube says the answer they all say the same answer yeah and i'm like holy cow all three of them are collaborating the same truthful response yeah so for me it was like okay these things are working out in the field i feel comfortable enough with using them in another country on TV, because now I can trust that what's going to come out of there is going to be accurate most of the time. And that's what people get to see with us pushing that envelope in this season, which the response to it is just tremendous because I've always been a big believer in ITC. I mean, you see the poster behind me, yeah. which uh, right here is the amazing world of psychic phenomena where in 1976, I discovered for the first time that, wow, you can record ghost voices. Yeah. I mean, I didn't discover it, you know, scientists were doing it, but in my world, oh my God, we can record the voices of ghosts. Mm -hmm. So I've been a big fan since 1976 at EVP. So for, and Ryan's on the same page, which is great. Why yeah. we work so well together mm -hmm. is because he handles the ITC and together we listen for those responses so that we know we're in the, we're in the right area or yeah. we're dealing with the same spirit. For everybody in the United States, you know that we've got Black Friday coming up in about a week, that Friday, day after Thanksgiving. So this year, I'm going to be doing a sale in my Etsy store, the Chris Fleming artwork from Wednesday, November 22nd until November 30th. So if you go there, you can check out all the different artwork I got for sale and all the amazing limited edition prints that I ship worldwide. During those dates, the 22nd to 30th, I'm going to be having a big sale. So make sure you take advantage of it. These pieces of art are great for your family, for your friends, for yourself, as well as for a loved one. And remember, Christmas is coming up, so it'll make a great present. And I plan to ship all these out about the first week of December. So you should be getting them in time for Christmas and for the holidays. So go have some fun and go to Etsy at Chris Fleming Artwork and check it out. So tell me about like um, your your feelings and what you liked about haunted Ireland this season, going to Ireland because you're from Scotland and I know you've always wanted to go to Ireland. So tell me about it. Oh, Ireland. I mean, when I got asked if I would like to go to Ireland, I mean, I was oh yeah. I mean, this this will be amazing because there is some similarities between Scotland and Ireland. You know, uh, myths, legends, spirits, belief systems, and all this kind of stuff. And it's such another ancient land to to dive into um now the difference between I, I just think you know we've we've grown so much as a team you know we know how each other work um you know those get together for debriefing and moving forward in each case has just been so slick 
um, this time. We, we, we've known exactly where to go. The new experiments that we brought in as well. We've come out, you know, obviously there's a year gap in between between Scotland and the, the Irish shows. And uh, in that time, you've just hit it. You know, going back, doing our thing, you know, using equipment, trying new techniques. And there was times I'm thinking to myself in that, we need to use this the next time. This would work. This would work because we need to get results. We only have 24 hours at some of these mm -hmm. locations. That's right. not a long time period. So everything we do, we've got to try and hit it with, with, with the equipment available to us or with the devices available to us. And um, so to do that and fine tune that in our own areas over the year between was fantastic but we you could see that i think in ireland you can see where we've we've worked on things on our, on our personal levels and we've come back in and said how about we try this guys or how about we try that and getting some phenomenal results i mean even like we spoke with evelyn there coming in with new experiments and new ideas to give yep. it that heavy scientific credibility to to what we're doing and then adding that into to what you do and adding that into what i do it, it just seemed to to merge together fantastic cases and fantastic results and I, you know what i was blown away as well i feel the energy between us all um you, you've got that trust and and faith in each other and you're watching each other's back yep. but at the same time you feel like spirit comes in you get more it just felt like there was, it just chimed amazingly. Just like, for example, the farmhouse when we went there, you know, to get a direct voice phenomena. <laughs> and my reaction to it at the time, that's, I mean, woof. <laughs> I mean, I was really taken aback. We couldn't believe it. And the excitability that you see between us and our reactions, that is our reactions. We, we are bouncing around there thinking, oh my God, because it's so exciting because we know something's going on. And we right. get it. We we get it on our equipment. We get we get it for cameras on's even better because a lot of time these things happen off camera. You know we're there. Like Kennedy Castle though, Kennedy Castle, the doors opening, oh. the door knocking, and, and the the chandelier, all while we were I, there. And it, you you see it on the camera, and you're like, oh my god. You know, I'm like, and I turn to the camera, break yeah. the fourth wall, and I'm like, this is what it's all about. I'm like, this yeah. is like. You know, I'm not by myself where I'm freaking out like, okay, what's yep. going to happen to me next? I've got my team here. we got the crew yep. here. And we're, we're in the middle of it. And that's, yep. to me, if you haven't seen Kennedy Castle, that's on the Lep, Lep Castle episode. Yeah, That was one of my favorite locations we went to because the activity was phenomenal. Right. I, I, as soon as we entered that room and the, <laughs> the door opened and, and then there was a chap at the door and yeah, you're right. We went to the other room and the, the light. Now, it was just following us. Yeah. The, the chandelier inside that room, if you remember, I mean, something you won't see in camera. I went and reached up to try and see if I could touch it. And it was so high. Can't touch I it. It was so high. Up there. I'm like, well, nobody swung it anyway. Yep, it's out of reach. It's so high up there. Um, but, but you know, we, we, and you can see us doing that at all times. We were getting activity and we get excited, but what you will always see if you look very, very carefully, you'll see us testing to see if we could make yeah. it or if it's the floor or, you know, so I'll give you an example. Charlieville, when the, the cot, the, the cradle was rocking back and forward. I mean, you see my reaction and I'm like, oh, that that's moving. Do you right. guys see that? And they're like, yeah. And what you don't see is me going around and, and bouncing around on the floorboards. And, you know, because obviously the, for time constraints, that's not all shown. Right, right. But we do that. We do that stuff because we are in full paranormal investigator modes um, when we're there and we do look for logical rational explanations uh, amongst the excitement of actually gaining stuff and i think that's what sets us apart when we do this yeah and i think uh i'm, I'm going to state this that the episode is not aired yet uh, it's black blackwater mm -hmm. or black tower castle am i saying black water black water black water yeah. um i i, I want to share this because it's not in the episode so we can share this yeah. is that's phenomenal. And for Ryan and I, we looked at each other like, oh my God, this is exciting. We are so excited. Is we got to spend the night there. So we arrived that evening, the day before we're going to start investigating and filming. And we stayed in the castle. Now we're on the third floor. It was you, me, and Simon, our sound guy. Ryan's at the end of the hall. I'm in the one. So as I start unpacking, I get up there and I'm unpacking. I start hearing these drums. I'm like, what the hell? Who the hell's drumming? I'm like, I mean, someone pull up with the car with these loud subwoofers, you know, like, so I look outside, there's no car out there, nothing. And I'm like, wow, that sounds like drumming. So I had asked about it and someone says, well, you know, back in the old days, they used to have wars, battles. I'm like, oh my God. So we go to bed that night. I wake up and there's a woman gliding across the room, goes through the wall. And I go, holy shit, I just saw a ghost. And I'm like, this place is amazing. 
So then I go back to sleep and then I wake up to hearing this voice. And then I see this cloaked, like shadow person with these red eyes. And I'm thinking, oh my God, are those, is that like the uh, smoke alarm or anything or some type of lights? Mm -hmm. But then I start hearing going, help me, help. So I go to grab my camera, my my cell phone, because I want to start filming this and then it disappears. So I'm like, holy cow, I heard drums. I see a ghost woman. I say, this, this, this place is insane, right? I said, all right, guys, show up tomorrow when we start investigating. I get up in the morning. I open up my door to go down to breakfast. You get out of your door and you're looking at me with your deer and headlights like, <laughs> and it, like something happened to you, something happened to me. So we exchanged yeah. Yeah. You know, that it was like 15, 20 minutes later after I saw this, because we both talked about the time, yeah. Yeah. you had something come into your room. What happened in your room? So in my room... Um... I was in the haunted room that was joined onto the old tower. And uh, I decided, obviously I had all my equipment with me, I decided that, maybe stupidly, I don't know, to set up a, a GS2 at the door to monitor any movement there. And I had various pieces of equipment sitting. And uh, so I went to sleep that night. Now, one of the reports inside that room was somebody waking up to a female at the bottom of the bed. Mm. Now, I'm, I'm going to admit something right now. One of the only things that I'm really scared and don't want to happen when I'm trying to sleep is something to stand at the bottom of my bed. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll communicate with you. I will, we'll exchange notes, maybe even phone numbers, but we are not <laughs> going to stand at the bottom of my bed when I'm sleeping. That's sleep time for me. But anyway, so I was like, I have to be ready just in case. So I go to sleep and I wake up at two o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you why I knew what time it was as well. I wake up at 2 a.m. or just around 2 a.m. time to hearing the JS2 going, boop, 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 which means there's movement coming through the grid. And I'm like, oh. And I jumped out of my bed sidewards. I probably glided over to where my phone was on the charger, my phone. I turn around and I film. I'm just like, I'm half sleeping. I'm just like, and I can't see anything, but you could clearly hear, boop, 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 you hear all the movement, what's going on. Right. Um, now, the reason we know what time it was, luckily, is that the iPhone logs the time that you take your photographs and your video and things like that. So we were able to match it. So that's why I knew what you'd got, because you'd filmed as well, and you had a timestamp on yours, and we weren't far, we were about 15 minutes or so apart. Right. There wasn't a lot of so time in there. So it went down the hallway to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, something moved, yeah. Something moved along that hot that that hallway, and um, and I don't know if you remember, Chris, but you know, <laughs> the time, the forty eight hours or thirty six hours, whatever we were there, I was a mess because <laughs> I just couldn't get any rest whatsoever. We actually right. investigated my room and everything. <laughs> it was just absolutely crazy, and uh, I can't wait till that one comes on to have a look. But also because I have a lot of things to share. If it's not in that show that I want to show people, yeah, um, walking through there, and because we done so much. Do you remember there, and I could, we can speak about this because obviously it's not going to be on the screen. Do you remember how many things went missing from crew members and yeah. turned up in different places? So, for example, the keys to the higher car. They couldn't find them. Remember, they ripped the place apart looking for the set yeah. of keys. There was, I think, battery packs for the drone for the, the, the um, for Gavin so he could do his work. He couldn't find them. And Simon, the sound guy, lost his razor. His razor went missing. <laughs> I remember him saying something like that. Oh, maybe I just misplaced it or something. He's trying to make excuses. Oh, so. Um, and the, yeah, the cabinet was in my room kept opening. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I was like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was so. It was so crazy. It was so crazy. And we lived this. I mean, this was yeah. like this was like a 36 hour investigation. The time we arrived and done our stuff and then left. Um, it was just such a crazy time. And I would not walk through Blackwater Castle without my video camera on record for the fear that something would happen and so I could document it. At the same time, I would just continuously with my phone in my hand all the time. Well, it's funny. I remember the one night uh, there was like that dining room area out the long tables and everybody would go out that one door to smoke, you know, and then everybody was in bed. It was like two 30 in the morning. And I said, I can't sleep. So I'm just going to go through EVP. So I'm sitting in there going through EVPs and all of a sudden the door behind me clicks and opens. Oh. Oh. And I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like, uh, so I'm kind of freaking out. Right. So I get my phone, start filming. And then I went and closed it, but I noticed, I said, you know what? I just think someone didn't close it all the way. Cause if I don't close mm-hmm. it all the way, it does pop open. So that may have been, it. I'm not sure. Yeah. But the one thing I wanted to point out that I thought was really remarkable is that the very next morning, you and I go do our walkthrough. And I said, I want to go outside because I heard the drums last night. Okay. So we go to the side of the castle 
and you break out your DR60. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember whether you asked the question or I asked the question. I think you did. You, mm-hmm. I said, you asked the question. So you said, is there any drums? Can we hear the drums? And then you play back on the DR60 and right away, very first yep. recording, there's the drums. And it's like, holy cow. So yeah. then you do it again. There it is again. So yeah. we got the drums on there twice. Yes. So then we go to ask about it. And then all of a sudden we hear direct voice phenomena with our own ears. The whole, you know, the cameraman and both Ryan and I hear drums coming from the other side of the little stream there. Yeah. So then we walk over there like, oh my God, not only did we capture it twice in EVP where you did not hear it, but the third time we heard it with our own ears and we caught it on camera. Yeah. Now in watching the, the, the episode, I, I got to see preliminary episodes, is you don't see all of that. You just hear the direct voice phenomena. Yeah. And then so Ryan and I get with the team and we're like, this place is insane. So I want people to realize that it's insane because oh, yeah. of all the things we had happened the night before, uh, and then the drums hearing it three times is just, you know, that that's unheard of. So that place is incredible. I loved that place. I would love oh, for us to, great. if we do a third season, yeah. is spend the night in some of these places and record oh, yes. and document all night. You know, if we get anything, we grab our camera and we talk about it. Yeah. I, th- I think I think that's a great idea because I think um, when you're when you're in these places and you stay all night, that's when you get the subtle paranormal activity going on, and you can get a feel for it. I mean, Blackwater was <laughs> I'm tell you right now, everyone it is crazy. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy, and um, I always knew that it would be very very difficult to try and document what happened to us in one uh, one hour show. Of course, that's going to be a highlight, and obviously they can do only what they can do with um, what they have there, but. <laughs> I even look at my phone, my camera roll on my phone, because I've got everything still in there, and I look back, and the amount of content I've got, never mind um, Turn TV or, or Discovery, is just mind-blowing, because it was just such a place where everything was happening. And um, remember poor Simon? I mean, I gave him a fright as oh, well. Didn't that was help, so but... funny. That was so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. You scared him, and he was like, because oh, Simon would get freaked out. Like oh, he, he, he just would get freaked out. We got our audio guy freaked out. He would try to, you know, like make an excuse. Oh, it was just this. It was just that. It was just that. And he'd have all these technical problems for, you know, mm-hmm. I go, Simon, do you always have these problems? No, but there might be an explanation. I go, there might be yeah. an explanation. You never had these, all these problems before and you're having all these problems. Batteries going dead, distortion, this and that. And so, I mean, questions, I know viewers are going to have some questions is like, what, which one this season was your favorite location? My favourite location um, this season, this is really difficult because they were all yep. pretty good in their own way. But um, if you had asked me this before we, we went in and we got told the locations, I was looking forward to the school. Right. right. Purely because of, you know, the poltergeist type activity. Yep. I wanted to see if it was true or not. I mean, that's that simple. Right. Lots of debate. Um, and it was good. Don't get yep. me wrong. It was good. Oh, but, cool. um, you know... Going to that battlefield village, the the farmhouse, uh, Ogram, you know that was special. I really <laughs> enjoyed that because of what happened in the farmhouse. Right, we go to the battlefield, we, the the fog that was coming around us. We had the drums. Incredible. It was just incredible stuff, uh, and I think we even actually had more than that. I mean, that's what we could see in that hour, but it really was r- amazing. And um, Lent Castle has to go in there somewhere because it was a really, really good location too. And Blackwater scared me to bits. <laughs> so, um, so it's, yes, it's, it's, it's difficult. Those those are probably the picks that I have. Um, but how do you pick out of them? What was I your know. favorite? God, I loved Black, you know, the castle, mm-hmm. the Blackwater Castle. I loved Lab Castle. Um, the school, I, I mean, I saw three ghosts when I was at the mm-hmm. school. You only get to see one of them. Mm-hmm. And I did two drawings of the ones I saw, but it, it was, you know, even Kennedy, you know, Kennedy Castle with everything happening. Yeah. I mean, there's, oh, there's yeah. fragments of every episode. Mm-hmm. You know, my four favorites, I think, were Lep, Wicklow, because oh, us coming yeah. in contact with the yeah. walking gallows at the end. Mm-hmm. I mean, hearing his voice in complete remorse and pain, suffering, uh, was just never heard that before through the Frank's mm-hmm. box was shocking. And then, yeah. of course, I like the school. I've seen the episode. I think it's really good. And then Ockel, I think yeah. there's some really tender uh, emotional moments in yeah. Ockel. So, you know, every location was great. I would have liked to see more in, in Alwi Cave regarding the Fae that yeah. we captured. 
And, yeah. and I wish we could have gone further in that cave, but you know, it's a 40 foot yeah. drop. We don't have the, <laughs> you know, the, the ropes and the emergency protocol to do that. Yeah. It was like, Oh my God, I wanted to go to where the waterfall was, you know, did you hear that waterfall roaring oh, in the background? I was dying to go see that, you know, yeah. but it was too dangerous and too far. Mm-hmm. You know, we couldn't, yeah. how are we going to go down 40 feet and then get back up? You know, we exactly. don't have the ropes and stuff. So, you know, all of them in their own way. So what would you think is like your, I mean, obviously you have such an, a, an arsenal of equipment. What are your favorite yeah. pieces of equipment? For me, it's, it's always going to go into the audio realm for me because it's where I'm getting the most results and communication work. So I like to use the Frank's box. I've had such yep. amazing communication from it. I've always got a DR60 in my inside yep. pocket. You know, I'm always taking it. The thing with the DR60 is only because, you know, you stand in silence you ask your question, three, two, one, go. You wait for your reply to come back and then you could hear it. Now, the, my only slight concern with it, and I think every investigator says it, is a bit gravelly. It's quite yeah. difficult live until That's you clean it up. That's the condenser mic, yeah. The condenser mic. Yeah, yeah, there's not much you can do about that. You're, you're sort of giving up that quality just to try and get that capture. Um, whereas the Frank's box, if you can cut out a lot of the, the, the radio bleed, you can hear those parts of the communication that's just mind-blowing. Wicklow J, like you said, the remorse coming from the walking gallows was just unbelievable what we were getting there. I, I mean, I, I've said to Spirit in Balgoni Castle once with the Franks box in front of 10 people, I said, we come here in total respect. And the Franks box said back to me, which was very emotional, uh, bless you, we do it back. Oh, that's incredible. And that's I just, incredible. I was absolutely blown away on an emotional level because from that point, it's taken it from just trying to gather evidence to that personal emotional touch. You're in communication with another consciousness who's there and they respect you as much as you respect them. You see, that's what I like working with you because I remember the first day we met, which was at Bannockburn and we mm-hmm. hadn't started filming yet. And when I, when I was there, I did an interview with, with Gail with yeah. somebody and I saw these soldiers and stuff around the trees. And I said, come with me. I want to show you something. Yeah. And we brought a camera with, but it wasn't really for the show. It's just a document. Mm-hmm. And you used your app and I yeah. called out to them that I wanted to help them cross. And you got to experience, you know, the little bit of the prayers yeah. for the dead and them responding. She's like, you're like, Oh my yeah. God, you're talking to them. They're crossing over. I said, yeah. Yeah. I could hear and them. I, They're talking about praying and crossing over. And yeah. yeah. And I said, this is what I do. This is why I'm yeah. here. So mm-hmm. every place we go, I have to do this and I'm going to yep. reach out whether they use it or not. This is what I'm going to do. So I wanted to set that precedent with you that this is important to me. Yeah. And, and, and you completely respected that and yep. you've jumped in and you've, you've shown yep. that respect to the spirits. And, and I appreciate that too from you yeah. because it's very important to me. And, and you understand too, having been out of yeah. your body and you yep. know, the, the torment some of these spirits go through. So it's a great team. Uh, you know, and, and Evelyn might not totally understand all this, um, mm-hmm. as well as Vogden as well, but she was shocking too. I mean, when we were at the school and they say goodbye to her, she's like, oh my yeah. God, you know, this is so creepy, you know, yes. but <laughs> it, it's, you and I can completely accept it and, and mm-hmm. completely understand, but for some people it'll freak them out mm-hmm. because they want that normalcy in their life and they don't want to be freaked out when they're back at home. You yeah. know, for me, I'm used to it. You're used to it. And yeah. that's why we get along so well. So, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm just glad that you got to take this time out and share this with a lot of my listeners because I've been wanting to interview for the past year. Um, and I think now is the perfect time. I mean, we're, you know, into three quarters of the way through the season. We've yeah. got three episodes left on uh, Spooked Ireland and then three mm-hmm. more that's going to air here in the United States. And for those listening, uh, the show is airing on Really Channel every Friday nights in the UK and Ireland at 9 p.m. And then it drops right after on Discovery+. Plus. In the United States and Canada, it drops every Tuesday on Discovery Plus and HBO Max. There is word of it airing on regular channels, maybe Travel Channel or something else in 2024, but you can watch it on the streamers. So I suggest if you've not seen the episode, go watch it. Let Ryan and myself know what you think, but watch Haunted Ireland in the USA and Canada and Spooked Ireland in the UK. Why the title changes? Well, there's a lot to it, but you know, marketing tends to sometimes change the titles mm-hmm. of shows depending upon the market. They felt Haunted would do gain more attention in the United States than Spooked. And Spooked gains more attention because of Most Haunted, they wanted to keep the title slightly different. And mm-hmm. I think that's why. So, 
anyway, that's it. Any other final words? Anything else you want to share with us, Ryan, before we uh, sign off? Just it was such a great idea in America to call it Haunted Scotland. I just have to thank Discovery <laughs> massively for that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was brilliant. My best friends in America love you, Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I just, yeah, I just want to say, you know, it, it's, you know, this work that we do is so important. It's fantastic. You know, we, we take it very seriously, whether there's a camera there or whether there's not. We do this for Correct. our life, you know, do this for our purpose. And, um, you know, we enjoy what we do, but we also give that respect across the spirit and back and forth. Everything we talk about and, we, and we're just so happy that we get to show people, even if it is just an hour every week from these locations to show some of the work that we do and um and we could certainly talk to to everybody about that work that they don't see the, those deeper aspects and i right. think they would be mind blown but just to thank everybody for their support Absolutely. the support the messages social media that i've had in um is just mind blowing and I, I thank everyone for that and uh just hope we can just continue to find out what's happening in this universe absolutely like everybody listening you know, if you haven't seen the show, please go watch the show. Those that have, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, the reviews have been phenomenal. Um, and we truly appreciate that because we both have a passion. We both do this full time, you know, and, and going to traveling, going to other countries and doing this continues to fulfill our passion and our career and with what we do, as well as bring to you our adventures and our journeys of what we're uncovering, but then also give us the opportunity to get in front of these spirits and try to help them and try to learn more about them for this field. So, you know, you guys are the driving force to keep us going. So we really appreciate that. So if, if you've seen the show or if you haven't seen the show, please share it with your friends, tell them about it, take photographs while you're watching it, post it on social media, do whatever you can to get it out there to continue so that hopefully we get a third season. We don't know where we're going to go. Could be Wales, England, could be Italy, could be, we don't know, you know, most likely it could be Wales, but, um, you know, get it out there, continue to, promote it we got three more episodes and you know hopefully we'll be back on the road in 2024 to bring you more content and discoveries of uh spirits and ghosts that we come in contact with but ryan for for people if they're not following you where can they go follow you um come over to facebook uh haunted scotland investigates haunted scotland page um you can get me there um i'm also on there under ryan o'neill you could come and see some work. I do post on my my personal profile what I'm doing and things as well. And you, you'll find me on Instagram and Twitter under my own name as well if you want to come say hi. And I will say hi back because I always answer everyone back. That's one thing I always do, say hi to everyone. So um, don't be shy. Come and say hi. That's wonderful. You're also doing a lot of events. You and Greg are doing events throughout Scotland and other areas. We do. We do. We, we, we try and do one event every month if we possibly can. And we have a lot of big ideas for 2024. If people want to come and join us for weekend events, week events, or just come for a evening to experience what we do and on a lighter level. Um, so you can come and join us for that as well. Excellent. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you and I always keep in touch and then hopefully we'll be out in 2024 back on the road doing what we yes. do, ghost busting. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> all right, my friend, you have a wonderful day. Um, I want to thank everybody for listening and for all the new listeners as well. This is Chris Fleming and Ryan O'Neill. You've been listening to this edition of Spirit Talk. I'll see you next time.